Hey everybody, this is Andrew from Tia's for Tech, and today I have another mini PC uh, to review on the channel. This one comes from a company called CyberGeek. See here, CyberGeek, small footprint, big impact. Uh, this is their Nano J1 mini PC, which uh, features an Intel Celeron N. 5095A processor at a base frequency of two gigahertz. Uh, so that processor is based on the 11th gen Intel Jasper Lake die. And like I said, two gigahertz base frequency boost up to 2.9 gigahertz and it features four threads and four megabytes of cache. So we'll go ahead and take a look at this and I'll kind of talk about some more of the specs as we open it up and go through what you get. So package easily opened, has a quick start guide here, gives you a little bit of quick start information. And in the package, you do have a power adapter. So this is kind of like a small compact, you know, standard wall adapter, the barrel plug. You also have a mount if you'd like to mount it behind your monitor. So this is a VESA mount. So what's really cool, a lot of mini PCs do this. You can basically kind of mount it behind the computer, right? So put this on the monitor behind and uh, it's out of the way and hidden and you don't have to see it on your desk or whatever. So that's pretty cool. It uh, looks like there's some rubber feet for the bottom of it and a couple packs of screws and then the PC itself. Now I have done, I mean, if you look on the channel, there's a bunch of mini PC reviews I've done in the past from uh, you know, different companies. I do really like reviewing these things. It's funny because, you know, these types of things are so much more powerful than whole desktop machines I used to have when I was uh, in high school and college and all that stuff. Totally different uh, ball game here, which is really cool. It's really, it's really interesting times when you can get you know, powerful machines in the palm of your hand here. Take a look at this, uh, and it is pretty high quality. Uh, this feels like this is aluminum. You know, this, at least it feels like it is. I think the this, this outside piece is anodized aluminum. Really nice, bottom is plastic. There's a couple of mounts here for the actual, that face adapter that I showed. But on the front, you have a power button, you have an audio jack, so headphone jack there, a USB-C port and two USB 3.0 ports right there on the front. Go over to the side, you can see there's a micro SD card slot. So if you wanna expand the memory or you know something like that, you can use the micro SD slot. Has a Kensington lock port there. Then on the back, you got your power in, two HDMI outs, a couple more USB ports, and, and a wired ethernet port. So fairly simple from a port perspective. Pretty much all you would need for doing things like um, a home theater, kind of office use, those sorts of things, kind of casual office, internet browsing, all those things that you might, you know, kind of need there. And it supports two, two monitors. So if you want to have dual monitors set up, you can easily do that with this as well. Now these do come uh, available to be configured in different ways. But I do think the, the Nano J1 all has the same processor as a starting point. This has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, which is nice. Has a M2 SATA port inside. And this one has uh, one terabyte of, of uh, storage. Features dual Wi-Fi, so 2.4 and 5 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi. Bluetooth 4.2. There's two HDMI ports, like I said. Uh, features Wacom LAN, PXE boot. RTC wake, auto power on. So, you know, the, the machine and BIOS do support some uh, standard features that you might want there. This does have Intel ultra high definition graphics. So 4K UHD resolution on the ports. You can use that for then for TV, games, home theater systems, all that sort of stuff where you need like a compact small little device that has a high quality output. This one comes loaded with Windows 11 Pro pre-installed. They also offer a Linux version if you prefer that. Now, depending on how you configure these, the price will vary. So I'll put a little info box here kind of showing the base lowest configuration and the highest configuration from a investment standpoint. But overall, you know, for what you're getting here and the quality of this, like again, metal case, nice looking device. Um, I do think 
you know, it's high quality at an affordable price for all the different use cases that you might be able to dream up for this. So what I will do in the next part of this video is go ahead and set this up, uh, connect it to a monitor, maybe do some screen recording of just some basic uh, benchmarking tasks and that sort of thing. I'm not really gonna try to run games on this because I don't think this is really slated for like gaming per se, but I'll do some video playing, that sort of thing, and you can kind of see how it performs. So let's go ahead and hop over there and take a look. So once I got this booted up and went through the Windows kind of setup, um, as you can see, as I'm clicking around here, it's pretty responsive for just a everyday PC use. Uh, you can see here outlines the specs, 16 gigs of RAM, Windows 11 Pro, a little bit of information there. And overall, you know, I was clicking around, I was kind of playing around with Edge and some other apps that are kind of built into the, the machine. And it behaved like a you know normal desktop machine. So definitely very responsive. Everything kind of loaded pretty quickly. You know, no lag or anything like that. Now, obviously, you do need to keep in mind that this is not a super speedy processor in and of itself, right? It's a four-core processor, two gigahertz base, two point nine gigahertz boost, and it's a Celeron processor, right? So it's not going to be some super blazing fast i9 or <laughs> even i7 so you have to keep that in mind but for for what it is it seems like you know it's a very usable desktop computer maybe if you're can you use this for work teams outlook office for school those sorts of things definitely more than enough uh, for that purpose now, the one thing I did notice here, just kind of playing around, and I wasn't really running too much on the computer at this time, uh, you know, the CPU did spike around, you know, even some points getting to 100% usage, uh, you know, just from clicking and opening apps and things like that. So, um, you know, obviously, again, uh, you're going to be a little bit constrained by the CPU power here, but... You know, from a memory perspective, I think, it, you know, gets, this one has 16 gigs of RAM. The hard drive will test in a little bit here. Um, you know, is speedy enough. You know, it's a good, uh, it's a good uh, responsive SSD. And the GPU, you know, it's an inbuilt, you know, Intel GPU. You know, that is what it is. This I sped up so you can just get a sense of kind of the read-write speeds on the SSD, which are, again, not off the charts great, but pretty good, you know, for probably what you're gonna use this machine for. So now you can see here, now these scores are really kind of bringing into focus, right, the, the processor speed, right? The, the single core score of 484 on Geekbench and a multi-core score of 1437 are gonna be on the lower end, you know, the budget PC range. But like I said, for the use cases you might be using this for, it's probably going to be perfectly fine. You know, this is not a gaming machine at all. You can play good video. You can use this as a multimedia machine, a desktop, you know, like I said, internet browsing, office, those sorts of things. You know, it's going to be more than adequate for that. Uh, I didn't really seem to think it was thermal throttling or anything. The fan did come on, but, you know, it's not that loud. So from that standpoint, I think it was performing pretty well. But then when you do run the user benchmark, PC benchmarks, you can see, right? It says gaming is a tree trunk. Desktop is the uh, a yacht. And workstation is also a tree trunk. And I don't know if you've run user benchmark before, but you can go look on their website and see, um, you know, how they rate those. The one thing I did notice is it said that it's a very high background CPU use of 38%. I could not figure out what that was because I killed all the processes that were running uh, that were, you know, taking up CPU time. So I'm not really sure why it was recording that. But overall, you know, benchmark on the CPU itself, kind of in the middle of the road there. Um, same thing as uh, for the uh, Intel graphics. And the one thing is, yeah, the the hard drive was performing below expectations, right? So I'm curious to understand why that is. And then, you know, this does also have micron memory, and it was also low on there. So I, I do, I might have to check the BIOS, like it's saying here, um, to see if there's something with the dual channel, 
uh, DDR that I might need to make a config change for or not, but I'll have to take a look at that later. Um, but this does also compare pretty similarly to other builds that were registered on user benchmark. So not too far off from, uh, you know, from other examples of this hardware configuration. Now here, I just uh, opened up YouTube and was just kind of streaming a couple of my videos on YouTube just to see if there was any stuttering or how it performed from just a video playback perspective. And it was fine, right? So it had no problems playing back video. So I'm gonna go ahead, unbox this. But we'll uh, in the playback here, it looks a little choppy. I, I think it, it might have been because and, uh, of the screen recording software that I was using. Uh, it just was, like I don't know, it didn't, res it didn't record package, this like perfectly smooth, but when I was playing it, it was fine. User guide. So overall, I think that this uh, does offer some pretty good value depending on your use case, right? Like you can't get this and expect to be like a gaming rig or anything like that. But if you, as I mentioned before, you just need a light desktop use video playing uh, you want to hook this up to your home media system and kind of watch some media that way. You want to use this as a home networking little, uh, you know, home lab box or maybe run some Docker containers, a little web server, that sort of thing. I think in that use case scenario, this is like you can do tons of stuff with it, right? Yeah, and it's um, and it's an affordable way to get into lots of those unique edge use cases that you wouldn't want to use a much more expensive machine to do, to to use for those. So uh, I will link to this in the description below. If you have any questions, definitely go ahead and comment. I'll be sure to answer them. This is Andrew from Tia's for Tech. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.